Today I've compiled 10 of my favorite dupes from high-end retailers, so let's get started. I have been seeing these hanging planters all over my Pinterest feed for the last few months and finally decided I need to make one. So I'm taking one of these nesting boxes from the Dollar Tree along with two medium-sized wreath rings that I got from Walmart. I have seen these at Dollar Tree, but not recently. I do have a whole Christmas video using the Dollar Tree ones for even more ideas. To attach the rings to the box, I'm grabbing my bronze eye pins from this variety pack. I will need four of these as well as four bronze jump rings. I got both of these from Amazon and will link them in my description box. Next, I found where I wanted the rings to sit on the sides of the box and marked where the screw would go and then added the eye pins. It was a little difficult to get them started. I ended up taking a small nail and hammered it so the screw would have kind of a pilot hole. And then you wanna make sure the hook part is facing horizontal rather than vertical. Once both eye pins were screwed in on one side, I added the jump rings into the hook and then attached the wreath ring before closing up the jump rings. And then repeated this process of adding the eye pins, jump rings, and wreath ring to the other side of the box. Now the wreath rings will not automatically lean into each other, so to get that look, I'm using two millimeter macrame cord. You could use jute twine, yarn, whatever you have, but I glued the starting end of the cord to the ring using my Starbond super glue. I would not recommend using hot glue here if you want the project to hold up over time. Then I wrapped the center of the rings together as long as I wanted it to be and then glued the end back down. You could stop here, add a hanger, and be done. I wanted to add a little bit more detail to the top, so I took this wood ring, also from Amazon. All of my Amazon products will be linked below for you, but to attach it, I glued it down first to hold it in place, and then I wrapped more macrame cord around it a few times. I think my camera died for that part, though. I also added a few wood beads in various sizes to another cord that would be the hanger. And to finish it off, I'm adding a loop and a wrap. So to make the wrap, create a loop as long as you want it for the very top where you will put it on a hook. Then take a separate cord and place it on top of the loop, making sure the end is sticking up and then create a second loop going the opposite direction with the loose cord and make it longer than you want your wrap section to be. Now wrap all of the cords together. When you have it as long as you want, take the end of the wrapping cord and put it through the bottom loop. Then go back to the top loop, pull that cord tight. This will create a knot and conceal the knot inside of the wrap for a nice clean look. Now cut off the loose ends and that's it. Stick a plant in the box, hang it up and enjoy. I created this little plant nook when I made my living room built-ins and I love the way it's coming together. Let me know what you think about this project. recreating this anthropology apothecary bud vase. Starting out with these jot book rings that I got from the Dollar Tree, I needed seven of them, which is why I had to buy two packages, but you will have five left over. Just like with the copper planter DIY, I'm going to be layering a few different colors of paint here, starting out with my black Waverly chalk paint. I'm also going to use my heat tool again to dry each layer of paint. The next color I will be using is Apple Barrel's Burnt Umber. I just love the red undertone of this color when you wanna get that aged or rusted look. Next, I'm taking this Tim Holtz Distress Oxide in the color Vintage Photo, and I'm going to spray it all over my book rings. I just love the way that this adds so much detail and dimension to a faux rust or an aged finish that you're going for. And once you add that heat tool to it, look at how the color changes and just really gives it that authentic look. After this, I did just go back and forth with my black and my burnt umber and the sprays until I was happy with how it turned out. 
Next, I'm gonna start laying everything out. So I grabbed this scrap wood from my garage. Measurements are on the screen along with these bud vases from Target. I'm sorry that is so out of frame, but they were $3 for three bud vases. And then I'm grabbing these two Dollar Tree clear bud vases as well. I need to figure out where my vases are going to sit so that I know how far or how long each dowel needs to be in between the rings. That is how the inspiration looked. I don't know exactly what they used. I think they probably used all metal, but this is the best I could come up with and I think it worked out pretty well. So I'm just gonna measure my dowel. I ended up cutting them down to be about an inch and a half in between each book ring. And then I did glue them together with my E6000. I don't think I show it, but I also cut down two tiny pieces of the dowel that were 5 eighths of an inch. Next, I have a slightly thicker dowel that I cut down to be 2 inches long. I have two of those, and I'm gluing a 10 millimeter bead to the top of it that's about the same thickness. You want those holes to be facing the sides because we're going to stick the book ring through it and then i just painted all of the dowels with that same process that we did the book rings now it's time to assemble and i'm not going to lie that book ring part is fragile so be careful with this if you attempt to make this project but i absolutely love the way it turned out i did just hot glue those little side pieces and then used my super glue to attach that tiny dowel to the end book ring. In hindsight, I probably should have glued everything together before painting any of it, but it still worked out just fine. And here's a look at the anthropology version for $58 and mine only cost eight. Let me know what you think of this dupe. these restoration hardware olive jars this is more of an inspired by than a true dupe but close enough i know this portion is completely out of focus which i didn't realize until editing so bear with me it is only a very small portion of this project i found these two vases at the goodwill they were $3.99 each and they were the perfect texture to recreate this project so I started out by painting both of them with my ivory colored chalk paint and then I am going to create the baking soda mixture using hazelnut and then my baking soda. I have tried this method a few times now and I'm really not a fan of it. I much prefer to use either joint compound or spackling as a texture additive rather than the baking soda. But I gave it one more shot. So I did just start by stippling this color all around my jar using a chippy brush and I started going down maybe like three rows and just kind of gradually fading it. Then I started taking my ivory color again and going back and forth with both that hazelnut mixture and the ivory, I just started creating a gradient so that it was starting to get lighter and lighter as I went down the vase. I know you can see a gray color off to the side there. I don't mention it because I didn't end up using that color at all. All I used was the hazelnut baking soda mixture and then the ivory. And I'm doing the same thing on the top and the bottom of both of these vases, just gradually fading it and making it look like a gradient. This is the same process we have used all throughout this video of just going back and forth and playing around with your colors back and forth until you are happy with the result. And last for this project, I took a piece of my sponge in that hazelnut color and then I just started dabbing it all over mostly on the high points and then also in some random spots here and there 
And that was all I did for this one. So here's a look at mine, $7 compared to the member version of $296 for the small olive jar from Restoration Hardware. If you are not a member, you are paying over $300, almost $400. So let me know what you think of this inspired by piece. For this anthropology dupe, I'm using a Dollar Tree basket, and I'm only using this basket for the shape. If you had something similar, it would work because next I'm going to cover the basket with canvas drop cloth fabric. I picked this up from Home Depot just to have it on hand. They carry several different sizes for as low as $10. I covered the basket in two layers of the drop cloth and the first layer I cut pretty close to the same size of the basket and wanted to cover up the handles as well. I wasn't going to paint the basket, but I did end up painting the inside and the bottom later on. It would definitely be easier to paint that before adding the fabric though. For the bottom, I cut slits into the fabric so it would mold around the curves with minimal wrinkles on the sides. Then I added a second layer, hot gluing it on top of the first, but I cut the second layer wider so that I could fold it over on the inside and have that canvas bag rim like the anthropology one. And I finished the bottom the same way as the first layer. So I covered up the handles and I want there to be handles on this basket. So I took my scissors and cut a slit in the middle of where the handle is and then folded it inward so you don't see that plastic and glued it down. Now I need to add the daisies. I did a few so I could figure out the best way to do this before showing you guys. I'm sure there's another way I could have done this, but I'm pretty happy with how they turned out. I took four millimeter macrame cord, which I get from Amazon and it's always linked in my description box, and I cut down seven pieces. The length doesn't really matter here because we'll end up cutting them down more, but for the least amount of waste, I would cut them to about three inches. Then you wanna pull the cords apart. The macrame is made up of three pieces twisted together. So I just untwisted them and I divided them into two piles of 10. To add the threads to the basket, I'm using yellow cotton twine. This is actually the colored twine that Dollar Tree had out last year. So it's pretty thick. And I took one group of 10 and added it horizontally, then added the second group of 10 vertically. Like I said, I'm sure there's a better way that I could have done this, but I just couldn't figure out how. And I wrapped the center with the thread a few times and kind of fanned out the macrame as I went so it would start creating more of a circle shape. Once the middle was as big as I wanted, I finished it off with a vertical line of thread on both sides and then it tied off the thread inside the basket and cut it off. Next, I cut off all of the excess macrame and shaped the flower. I repeated this several times around the basket, but I won't bore you with all of that. So let's take a look at the numbers. The anthropology version cost $34. I had all of these materials on hand, but you could find everything you needed at the Dollar Tree for just $5. is what my inspiration was. So it's like this shell decor modern stand thing. And I am going to take um, some foam core board, trace a large circle and cut this out. So when cutting out foam core board, you wanna make sure you have a very sharp knife so that you don't get any wonky, jaggedy edges and that it's nice and smooth. Then I'm gonna take a smaller object and do the same thing, cutting out our smaller circle. Next, I'm taking this icing cake decorating kit that I have, and I'm gonna take my piping bag because this is what we're going to use to get all of our little circles on to our foam core board. So during my bathroom renovation, my husband bought this giant thing of a joint compound and we didn't even use half of it. So I figured why not come up with some DIYs that I can create using the leftover joint compound. And I have to give a shout out to my friend Brandy at the DIY struggle because she has a whole video on ways that you can use joint compound to create texture 
on different materials and it is awesome. So I'm gonna link it for you down below. Make sure you check that out because she totally inspired this idea. So next I'm taking my piping bag and we're just going to create the center part just like our inspiration had. So I just put some globs on there and then smoothed it down with my like plastic little spatula here. And then I'm gonna take a comb, just like a hair comb, and that's how I'm gonna get those little lines that you saw in the inspiration image. This worked out perfect. So next I wanna create the little circles and on the inspiration, that one was made out of seashells. I'm assuming it just said shells, so I would imagine those are seashells, but <laughs> I didn't have seashells and this is what I wanted to use anyways. So I just created varying sizes of circles, some smaller, some medium, some larger, and I just filled it all the way around my circle on both sides. And then I had to let that sit around to dry for about a day, I would say it took for this piece to dry. Next, we're gonna make our base. I'm taking one of these MDF signs that you can find at the Dollar Tree along with one of their larger dowel rods. And I'm gonna paint both of these black. I also cut down, clearly you can see, I cut down that board to make it a little smaller. Next, I need to find the center of my board and we're gonna drill a little hole so that I can put my dowel rod in there and make it nice and secure. Of course, I gotta clean up my space. I love this little vacuum. I will link it down below. It is from Amazon. Then I'm gonna take some wood glue, stick my dowel in there and set it down to dry. So once my sculpture piece is dried, I'm taking like a sanding block and just making sure there's no like really rough spots and this stuff is really easy to sand so you can mold it to be however you want. Then I'm gonna take my ivory chalk paint and I'm gonna paint everything all the right to the front and the back and I went in all kinds of different directions to make sure I got into all those little grooves and spaces. Then I'm gonna take my mineral chalk paint and this is like a stencil brush from Target actually, but I love this thing because it's so like frayed that it's perfect for distressing something like this. So I just went back and forth with my mineral and my ivory until I got the look that I wanted. The last little step here is to take our hot glue and attach the foam core joint compound board sculpture to the base. And that's it for this one. This was super easy. So the inspiration cost $60 and mine was free because I had all of these materials on hand. Now mine does look a little bit different, but I used colors that would fit my home decor style. You could use your imagination with this. You could do so many different things. Make it blue if you wanted to make a different design. There are so many ways you could make this your own. This project, I'm duping a frosted votive, which is really popular right now. I've been seeing these all over the place. And I know you can get that stained glass or colored glass look using food coloring, but I didn't have any food coloring when I started this. So I thought, what if I use paint and water it down? The votive color I'm duping is a blush color but the photos make it look like it has a little bit more of a brown tint as well. So I used a tan, red, yellow, and light pink color acrylic paint and made the perfect color. Once I was happy with the color, I added in the Mod Podge because you need a glue for the color to absorb into and stick to your glass. You do wanna water it down as well. I forgot to do that at first, but quickly realized the mixture was just way too thick. Next, I'm taking a hurricane glass and pouring the Mod Podge paint water mixture down the sides and rolling the glass around until it is evenly coated. Once the glass is coated inside, if there are any bubbles, you want to pop those or they will show up on your finished piece. And then set it upside down for a little bit to let any excess paint drip out. Next, I put it into the oven at 250 degrees for what should have only been an hour, but I left it in there for several hours and this paint was just not working it was still super thick and opaque not at all what i was looking for the good thing is since this is glue and acrylic paint i could peel it right off and start over so i did the same thing again only using a tiny amount of paint and a lot more water it worked a little bit better but it still was not quite right so i gave in and ordered some food coloring from amazon 
Using these colors, I mixed them into my Mod Podge, added a little bit of water, coated the inside of my glass, and then stuck it in the oven for an hour. And it was perfect. Now we just need to add the frosted look. But man, you guys, this project was really trying to knock me down and I just kept on going because I really wanted to figure it out. I don't know if there is a white frosted glass spray paint, but apparently I bought clear. And as soon as I started spraying it, I was wondering why the heck there was not white, but it was giving that frosted kind of look. So now I'm running out of time. This was Monday evening for the video posting Friday. So I looked around my craft room and found this faux snow spray that I bought last Christmas but never used. So let's give it a try. Why not? To my surprise, this was the perfect medium to add and get that white frosty look to dupe the Magnolia votive. I did have to spray it on, let it dry, wipe off the texture and slowly keep building it up until I was happy with the look. And the color of the glass did lighten a bit with everything that was added on top of it, but I really love the look that I got. The Magnolia one is only $12 and had I known the struggle this was going to put me through, I probably would not have bothered, but in the end, I'm so glad I kept going and figured it out. First, I'm taking my Starbond um, super glue and I started gluing four blocks together to make a long row. Um, my Starbond glue didn't really hold these together too well. It was more like absorbing into the wood. So I do end up switching over to my hot glue and using the Gorilla hot glue sticks and that worked out just fine. I did want a bit more of a secure hold, but this ended up working out just fine for this project. And you're going to want to make 40 sets of four blocks each to create this project. So I'm taking this drum lampshade. It's a five inch lampshade that I got from Facebook Marketplace. I believe I got it for about $6. And then I'm also taking this embroidery hoop, which I got from Hobby Lobby. And this is a 10 inch size embroidery hoop. First, I'm going to take just a scrap piece of wood from my garage, place the lampshade on top and then separating the embroidery hoops, I placed one on the bottom. Then we're going to start taking our tumbling tower block sticks is what I'm going to call them. <laughs> and we're going to start placing them around the lampshade and around the embroidery hoop. So I started out with one um, like on all four sides so that I could get everything attached. Again, I am just using my Gorilla hot glue stick. And here is an image of what we're actually making. It's a Scandinavian inspired um, lamp shade. And they use more like um, paint stir sticks or like thin scrap wood. But I thought this would be really cool to make with the tow tumbling tower blocks or Jenga blocks, whichever you would like to call them. So I started hot gluing them both to my lampshade and then also to the bottom part of the embroidery hoop. For this second embroidery hoop, I did cut off a small portion of it so that it would be the same exact size as my first embroidery hoop because the second one's always a little bit larger. But I'm gonna flip my lampshade upside down now and we're gonna place that second embroidery hoop on the bottom just like we did the first one and we're gonna repeat that same process. So we're gonna start taking our tower block sticks and we're gonna place them right up against the ones that we had first attached and do the same thing, attaching them to both the lampshade and to the embroidery hoop, just using our hot glue. And again, this worked out just fine. I don't know that this will hold up for long-term use, especially with this being a lamp, but we'll see. It's, <laughs> it's gonna work just fine for a decorative purpose. So here I am just going back and forth, placing all of my sticks around. And every time I got to, I would place my sticks going one direction, flip my lampshade over, place them going the opposite direction. And this really did not take long at all to create. Once 
once I had all of my block sticks glued down in place, I am taking this Hema Ikea lamp cord kit. I'm not really sure what these are even called or how to pronounce Ikea names. I think we all struggle with that. But just attaching this to my lampshade and that's it for this project. I absolutely love how this turned out. Now the one I was inspired by on Pinterest was a lot larger, but I really love the size of this one that I made. It's still fairly large. If you think about it, a 10 inch embroidery hoop is still pretty big. But I have this hanging over top of my desk in my living room and I just absolutely love the little accent. I saw these beautiful clay beads on the Pure Salt website and knew I could recreate them for way less than $238. I decided to use air dry clay here and I had a little bit left of my paper clay. I get this from Michaels, it's around $12 and depending on the size project you're making, you can usually make quite a few things. I haven't loved working with air dry clay in the past and prefer polymer clay, but I realized I needed to add water to the air dry clay while working with it. That helps to keep it from drying out too quickly and fill in any of the cracks that start to appear. To make the beads, I'm taking small quarter size pieces and rolling them into a ball, adding water to the surface to smooth it out, and then smushing the circles down a bit to create a more stone-like shape. I wanted the beads to be very organic looking and not all identical, so there was no rhyme or reason to how I shaped them. I ran out of my paper clay and only had about half of the beads that I wanted, but before I go get more clay, I need to put a hole into the center for where we're going to string them up. I'm using this clay tool, but anything would work here to just add a hole. I wanted to compare another brand of air dry clay, so I picked up this pack of DAS to finish the beads. I really like the feel of this one over the paper clay and the color is much whiter. I know my paper clay was a little bit older and dried out by the time I got to the end of the package, but taking that out of the equation, both clays dried in the same amount of time. They both shrunk slightly. And since I added the water in this time, I didn't notice any cracks form as it dried, which was great. That was really why I didn't enjoy working with air dry clay in the past. You also get a lot more clay for your money with the DAS. They both cost $11.99 and the paper clay you get 16 ounces, where the DAS comes in 35 ounces, so more than double the amount of clay. After I had all the beads made, I made 32 of them. I'm taking some different objects I have around my craft room to add some detail to the edges. Not on all the beads, but on some of them since the inspiration had some edge details. So I used this metal ribbon from Dollar Tree to give a beveled look and then this texture mold that I have to get some variety and then let the beads dry overnight. Now we can paint and I wanted to get that natural earthy look just like the inspiration with the various brown tones. I did not end up using the antique wax or the DIY dark wax. And I'm using a sponge to apply the paint so I can blend some of the colors together easier. I split the beads out into four groups of eight and gave them one coat of paint using four of the colors, coffee, sandstone, hazelnut, and fawn. Then I took each group and added a second coat of paint and this time I added in some of the other colors to give the stones dimension and look more earthy. I just played around with the colors until I was happy with the way they were looking. The holes I added were not quite thick enough for my string to fit through, so I took my drill and made them slightly bigger before I could string them up. And I used Dollar Tree black cotton twine and put the beads on randomly so there wasn't a specific pattern. Last I added a tassel using this leather string and that's it for this one. I love the way these turned out and for so much less than $238.
taking my Craftsmart polymer clay and rolled it out and then cut out a bunch of squares using a cutter. Next I took each of the squares and held it so one of the corners is facing up more like a diamond and then I rolled in the two sides onto each other but then folded the corners back out to make a petal shape. I wanted the petals to look organic and not like they were all identical so I pinched the back and kind of bent it in different directions. The anthropology version has more pointed looking petals so I also gently pulled on the top to elongate them. Once I had a few petals made I started adding them to a vase and since the bottom of the petals is rolled in and comes to a point, I used that part to mold it to the vase. I also used this liquid Sculpey, which acts as a glue and added a dab under each petal so it stays in place once it's baked. I rolled up the rest of my petals and added them to the vase, trying to closely mimic the shape of the anthropology version. And once I had all of the petals attached, I put the vase into the oven at 275 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 minutes. Then turned the oven off and let the glass cool down inside. I made two vases and spray painted them, which apparently I didn't hit record for, but I used heirloom white on one and khaki on the other, both by Rust-Oleum, and that was it for these. I love the way they turned out and I only had to spend money on one of the spray paints, but if you had to buy everything, this would cost about $28 for both compared to Anthropology at $96. I found this beautiful macrame wreath from the seller Rusty Orchid. I will link all of the shops I duped today down in my description box, but I picked up this single twist 3mm macrame cord from Hobby Lobby for $6.99 in the color Fern, only because they were sold out of white and I actually really love how this color turned out. So I cut 66 pieces at 30 inches each. Next, I picked up these three packs of wreath rings from the Dollar Tree. I grabbed several of these because I only ever see them at Christmas time, but I'm only using the middle size, which is eight inches, and going to add all 66 macrame cords using a lark's head knot. This is a basic macrame knot to get you started with almost any project. Take a strand and fold it in half. Take the middle of the cord and place it under the wreath ring. Take the ends of the strand over top of the ring and down through the loop and pull that tight. Once all 66 pieces are added to the wreath ring, now we can start the fun part. So take a group of six knots and section those off. And then take the center two knots, so you have four cords. Now we're gonna make a diagonal double half hitch knot. There are two knots we're gonna use on this piece and this is the main one. Next take two cords and the outermost cord on the right is going to be your guide or your stationary cord. This is gonna create the diagonal. So you pull that cord towards the left and then take the cord next to it to create the knot. The way I think of this is really simple. So you create a U and pull it through and you do this two times. Keep your stationary cord pulled toward the left and take that working cord, make a U over top of the stationary cord, wrap it around and pull the end through the U, then pull that tight. Then do the same thing on the next two cords. This time your stationary cord will go toward the right, then make a U and pull it through. Now we need to connect the two sections. You can go in either direction, either keep going to the right or go to the left, but whichever way you go, make sure you do the same all the way around the wreath. And this is gonna create a little triangle. Next, we're gonna repeat this process two more times for the remaining cords out of the six that we had pulled out to start with.
So you'll end up with three rows forming a slightly bigger triangle each time. And then repeat this around the entire wreath. So you'll end up with 11 triangle sections. Next, I wanna add the little berries like the inspiration had. I'm gonna use white cord for this instead of red, but you could use any colors you choose. This is two millimeter cord and I cut it down to 30 inches. You're gonna need 11 pieces just like this. Now you're gonna take two cords in the center where two triangle edges meet. This is where we will attach the white cord. This time we're making a square knot and to do that, you place the middle of the white cord under the two green cords. Then make a four with the left strand over top of the green ones. Pull the right white cord on top of the straight portion of the four and then take the end of the right cord behind the green cords and up through the center of the four and then pull that tight. Now the white cord is attached and you wanna slide it up as far as you can towards the wreath ring. That was only half of the square knot, so now you wanna do the same thing starting on the right, creating a backwards four and then pull the left cord on top of the straight section of the backwards four. Then take the end of the left cord behind the green cords up through the center of the backwards four and pull that tight. Then repeat this five more times to make six square knots in total. There will naturally be some gaps between your knots. So once you make all six, push the last knot up so the whole thing squishes together. Now to make this look like a berry, you wanna flip it up and there's a little hole at the top right between the two triangles and push all four cords down through that hole. Next, we're going to create a few more square knots. So take the two green cords that we just used for the berry and then one from each side. So you have four green cords. You also wanna hold the white cords in the center with the two green cords so you can conceal them. So create a square knot just like we did before, but push the first knot up as high as you can right up against that berry to hold it in place. And once you finish the square knot, cut the ends of the white cords. Now take the two right cords from the square knot we just made and two more to the right of it to make another square knot. And then do the same thing on the left side. Next, we wanna join the two together and create one more square knot with the four center cords. So you'll end up having a little diamond shape of four square knots. Then we need to create two more rows of the diagonal double half hitch knot to complete this section. So you wanna start with the second cord in from the left to start this first row, and then the same with the one to the right. Start with the second cord in from the right and use the two outside cords to create the second row.
That completes the section and you want to repeat this all the way around the wreath. Next, I want to cut down all of the cords. I used the shortest piece I could find as a starting point and cut down the rest of the cords to be roughly the same. This doesn't need to be exact at this point. And then I combed out the twist to make it more fluffy. And now to clean up the edges and give the wreath its shape, I used my roller and rotary blade to make the cords all the same length. You could also use scissors. I just found this method to work really easy and it was super precise and took up less time. Next week, I'll be back with all new projects after taking a much needed break for the holidays.